Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Writers Toolshed. Uh, you're here with today with Richie. Um, JM's not here, unfortunately. He's busy in South Korea. But I'm not alone. I'm uh, joined by one of my best friends, Anne Campbell. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Writers Toolshed, Anne. Cheers, Rich. Uh, probably throughout this podcast, I'm going to call Anne Campbell quite a lot because that's just what we do. We call each other by our surnames. Don't know why. You can connect the dots, like. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we won't be talking about much fantasy today either, because Ant is a comedian, uh, one of the funniest people I know, and we've recently, the pair of us, just sent off a script uh, for a sitcom, so we're going to be talking about that. Uh, it's actually one of the first things we ever wrote, wasn't it, together? Yeah, it's gone back a fair bit now, isn't it? I think it was 2013 when we started it, and then 2014 when we finished it, for the first time anyway. We revised it, didn't we, when we went back to it this yeah. year? It was interesting going back to it, though. Like, I've forgotten about so many of the jokes and stuff that we'd put in there. Yeah, it but... was a time capsule, wasn't it? Yeah, some of them were very dated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some of them were extremely dated, like, but... Yeah. Done a good job with it in the end, like, I felt anyway. Yeah, so that's something we're going to be exploring, isn't it? Going to be getting that script off so everywhere. Uh, see if anyone takes a bite of the cherry. The thing about Campbell, which I think a lot of listeners would appreciate, is that you've got such an incredible presence on social media. And it all comes down to the content that you write and produce. And it just makes entertains people so much. Like, how, how many, went on Twitter, how many followers did you have at the peak? Um, I used to have about 38,000 or something like that. It was mad. And that was just all uh, organic, organic growth, wasn't it? There was no follow, follow, no, follow me, follow back any, and all that. Yeah, none of that. PC for PC nonsense and that. Yeah, it's all ridiculous. So it's incredible. Like, and it was all down to the the content that you were producing. So that's what we're going to talk about today: how you can entertain people with just purely written words. Because I read a lot of books that are meant to be funny, and I just don't find them entertaining whatsoever so yeah that'll be a good one so tell us a bit more about your experiences and uh and what, what's your background in writing and comedy one sec me me ma shouting me what <laughs> on zoom <laughs> proper went out the window that professionalism there didn't it like four minutes in <laughs> <laughs> ah. i started the um, to answer your question it's something I always done when I was like a kid, if I'm honest. Even when I was in junior school and secondary school, I'd always be a bit of a clown or I'd always be writing little bits and I'd always be interested in stand-up, watching stand-up, writing um, little scenarios and that. Yeah. So I feel as though when I started writing it professionally, I had that background. I think that's what helped me. You get people who sort of don't, they'll have like a bit of a, an idea of wanting to go into it but they wouldn't have like grew up with the idea in that so i think maybe i was a bit more experienced in, in my head with writing the, the stuff yeah but yeah i mean that's my theory anyway i don't know it's probably all the shite really but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i suppose when you you look at stand up you don't really appreciate how much writing goes into like a uh, performance like that like I've seen you do it, like spend hours and hours slaving away over your you, you set, and then you've got to go out and practice it. And in you, the only way you can test it is in front of crowds and the, the amount of times that, like, you can comedians die on their ass. It's brutal. Yeah, it can be. It can be a very cutthroat business, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the same with anything. What I think is, it's you get. What you put in really so if you're writing a lot and you're practicing a lot and you're working on things and you're gigging often then it's not really as daunting as it may seem to people who don't do it like because yeah. what what people will see is they'll go to the show and they'll see the finished article of it and they think oh, i can't believe that he's done this or that or that was really funny when in reality there's probably about 20 or 30 gigs before it where they haven't really went that well whilst I was trying to word out the jokes. Yeah. And then I've been trying to practice it and come up with little connections in my head. So I'm not standing there with a notepad. 
and then once you get to that point where everyone else is coming to see you you've you've done most of the hard part really and in my opinion that's 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 like the payoff at the end yeah once you're so assured with what you're writing and what you're saying then the rest of it sort of falls into place definitely i i think with your kind of uh comedy what i like about it is very story driven there's like a lot of visual images which from like a writing perspective is brilliant because they're the kind of things that you need to do to form images in people's minds so like what sort of a process do you go through when you're writing jokes and um stories and things like that i wouldn't say there is much of a process if i'm honest it usually will come to me later on in the the night so like say as I'm winding down for the night, or if I'm about to go to sleep, I might get like a little idea. Like I used to do a bit about Tinder, and that turned into a big sort of four or five minute long bit. Yeah. But that all stemmed from one observation. And then I'd come back to it, and then I'd add to it, and then I'd do a gig with it. And then slowly but surely, it sort of snowballs. Yeah. So if that's like, I wouldn't even really say that's a process because. I tended to be out with work. I think usually if I tried to be too methodical with it, they tended to be the, the, the things that didn't work. Yeah. It was quite similar when we were doing this, uh, writing the sitcom the first time around. Because um, it would just be like, we'd be sitting there, wouldn't we, and we'd just be throwing ideas out. That's it, yeah. Yeah. I think with the sitcom, it works slightly differently because there's a structure there and you've got characters, you act in a certain way. So you can apply certain lines to them or you can maybe put yourself in their shoes, think about how they would react to something. Yeah. But a lot of the best stuff I find is stuff that's off the cuff, what happens in the moment, and then you take it away and you sort of, you look at it in a, from a different perspective, maybe a few days later, and then it'll sort of click into place. I mean, some of the funniest things I've seen in your standoff is when you've had hecklers. And you just absolutely kill them off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like a, again, that's like a, a in the moment type of thing when you're sort of experiencing like a, something like that with a lot of other people. I think you can channel it on, on the psyche because one thing I think with hecklers and you get people who will they'll shout out and then you'll put them down and everyone will burst out laughing and, and you get a round of applause. In theory, these people want you to put that person down because for ninety percent of the people there, they're ruining the show, so they're just happy for you to acknowledge it and bury them, and then move yeah. on from that. And I think well, that's—I think maybe that's what I think when I approach it to make me feel a bit more fearless when I do it. Yeah, definitely. You, that's, that's one thing you've got to do. There must be like so much doubt and stuff swirling around your mind when you're getting ready for a gig. It's, it's like you say you've got to be i have the courage to get up and do it in front of like how you've done it how many people have the biggest crowd that you've done so biggest crowd probably about 400 maybe yeah it's massive it is quite big i think but they can be the easiest gigs as well because if it's a good room and people are enjoying it it only takes a pot a pocket of people to be enjoying it for other people to laugh around them yeah Whereas if you do a gig to like six or seven people, which I have done, they can be a lot more difficult because even if people do find it funny, they're scared to laugh on their own. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't want that comfort of the crowd around them. So in my own show, when people actually came to come and see me, that was like, that was about 170, I think. And that was two separate shows. Nice. So it's, like, it's a big part of it, knowing your audience then really, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. Definitely. And that comes with experience as well. That's something that you learn the hard way usually when you're sort of in some like town that maybe like pro Brexit or something and you start on some anti Brexit <laughs> rant. Or you just politicise anything. If you're in the wrong place, people are immediately not gonna like it, no matter where they sit on the spectrum really. So a bad night. And you do get them. You never know how it's gonna go really. Because that same set I've done that I've done in Halifax has went dead well in other places and then it just didn't work that night so it's a really really strange beast Fickle so have you got any tips then for like writing jokes or writing stories I mean one thing I like about you is like you've got quite a unique range of metaphors and similes which are used quite a lot in comedy and stand-up I think so what have you got any 
like formulas or methods that you you employ when you're writing? I mean, the metaphor thing is something that Frankie Boyle does it very well. Does it a lot better than I do anyway. But he, like, he sort of influenced that style of comedy. And I think, especially on Twitter, where you're limited to what you can say, it's about having the punchiness in either at the end of the joke or, or having that twist in the middle where you compare it to something. Because no one wants to read it like an essay. And you get that on Facebook, you know what I mean? People just waffling onto themselves and no one's bothered. No one's listening to what they're saying. Yeah. Because it's too long. People want to just... You want things that, if it can be, to the point. Yeah. So I think if I, you apply that to writing a joke and you can twist things with a good amount of imagery, it usually will work. There's bits like the method I would usually have is I would find something I can't really think of an example, to be honest, but I might be watching the telly or the news or a topical thing will come up and I'll make a note of it somewhere, I'll note it down on my phone. Yeah. And then it could be like a few hours or a few weeks later, the first part of the joke might be come on the telly or something. And then I'll think to myself, I can attach those two things when yeah. I go back and write it. But a lot of the time, if I'm totally honest, I don't really know where it comes from. Yeah. Just seems to channel it from somewhere and, I, and I'll think of it. And then once I think of it, I'll, I'll know whether it's good or not, whether it's going to work. Nice. The uh, the talent coming through there, mm, maybe the anger, anger <laughs> more so than talent. Like, <laughs> so what about like uh, delivering funny lines or when you're building up stories? How how would you recommend people do that? Do you mean from like a writing point of view? Yeah, from a writing point of view. Yeah. I mean, I'd usually what I do is I'll write it and then I'll do it for like a performance. So putting certain emphasis on like parts of the the story or sometimes i'd use like longer pauses yeah to try and drive things home one thing that works in comedy as well is lists when you start listing things yeah i know that sounds really vague but you know if they can go on a bit of a rant or something and then you start reeling things off quickly sort of to the point as a list I can keep people entertained because it sort of draws back to what I said about it's been to the point keeps people like on the point of what they're, they're listening to or what they're reading. Yeah. Um, I heard that about lists as well, that people do enjoy lists. I don't know why. That's yeah. Nice. Probably it, it, it cuts through the, the sort of the beef of the, the story or whatever. If there's an like unnecessary amount of words in there, People will sort of subconsciously tune off, I think. Yeah. It's funny how, uh, how we've changed when we come to, we're faced with like reading something and we just think, oh, I'm not reading that. It's more than five lines long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and at the same time, they like, have written jokes and then I've, a few days later, I'll come back to them and think, nah, that's shite. Yeah. It's just like, a, it's just a process that, and, and I've had ones where I thought, I've been a bit on the fence with them and they've turned out to be the best stuff. So it's just, it's mainly, it's more about how people perceive it, I think. Definitely, yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, it's I think the delivery is a big part as well. I think that's one of your strengths as well as how you deliver things. And so that's quite interesting. And how you design stories and like how you're going to uh, build up to the, the punchlines and whatnot. Uh, but I think when it came to writing a sitcom, obviously you said you said every difference and sitcom was very different because you've got all these different characters, and then you you're building like an arc for them, each one, aren't you? Over was it ten episodes in the end? Yeah, yeah, I think it was really ten episodes. Yeah, so um, yeah, that that was quite interesting though. And it's just funny how we we decided to do that in the first place, like. When we were, what was it, 21, 22? We were a bit young, older than that. I even yeah, would have been, yeah. Well, yeah, just give it a go and see what happens. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about as well before we wrap up, uh, we mentioned at the start about your significant presence on uh, social media. Have you got any tips for anyone out there looking to build a following like that? I mean, what I sort of done was try and approach 
what you do maybe as fearlessly as you can if you're thinking about something if you're on the fence with something but the end goal for you is like I wanted to be like reaching as many people as possible just do it just go for it because there was a lot of jokes that I had especially in the early days which were quite sort of dark controversial yeah. um, <laughs> and they would just people would just pick up on that you know what I mean and you just pick up on like do you think oh that's a bit interesting and as you were mentioning with the writing using like metaphors and things like that if you make something interesting and you work on it and you're fearless with it I think it pays off it doesn't happen overnight but it's it's one of them really yeah just keep chipping away at it yeah i say so yeah and and just yeah i can't, I can't really because it happened for me over the course of like what six or seven years and it was something that i never really focused on if i'm honest i just wanted to reach as many people as i could yeah and the way i saw it on twitter is if people were retweeting the stuff anyway which they were people were going to see it whether they were following me or not and i think that sort of that, that can happen so and then it gets to a stage if you get your name out there more, more often than not it'll start popping up on people's feeds and conversations with people and yeah. then it just grows it sort of snowballs from there yeah you just gotta get that first snowball down the hill haven't you yeah that's it say it into an avalanche <laughs> yeah what the uh the uh where's that derby we like tonight avalanche of goals against Everton. <sighs> yeah I'll, yeah i'm trying to think what it's gonna end up yeah well we'll see so we'll see how it goes yeah well thanks very much for uh giving up your time chatting today no problem man thanks for having me enjoyed it you're very interesting um, so thanks again everyone for listening we'll be back in a few weeks time we've got a few more interesting things coming up my book prize laments coming up soon i've got loads of interesting stuff coming on for that as always if you enjoyed please give us a like a share follow tell us about tell us to everyone you know and uh we'll, we'll keep this thing going and growing it uh, but yeah thanks very much for uh for listening today thanks very much to Vance as well Nice one. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, catch you everyone soon. Hopefully, stay safe, stay well. See you later.